Eran más que disfrutar. Espacio anunciado. Ya. Yeah. Okay, man, speed. I'm not sure why my connection is successful. Mm. I to upload speed. Yeah, that's a good one. Yep. Alright. Let me check. Alright, so yeah. Yeah. All right, so we have three. Let's just wait for the others. We only have three as of the moment. But while waiting for them, oh yes, Shing, Shing and Takeda, hi. All right, now we're up 16. Good evening, Verano Parkon, good evening, hi. So while we wait for the people, um, where are you guys from? Can can I ask where are you guys from? Good evening, Julius. MJ, MJ's here. All right. Hello, Kelvin. Hi, Kelvin. Eggy. Hi, Eggy. Jonathan, from Abu Dhabi. Wow, that's great. Abu Dhabi. Um, it's very heartwarming knowing that your channel reaches the Filipinos abroad. Makati. Kelvin is from Makati. MJ's from Davao. Good. Good. Hi. Good evening, Harvey. Yes. Is Kabeti is from Qatar. Wow. Eggy is from Rizal. Ashton Tyler from Baguio. Hello. Arnel Gutierrez. Good evening from Bulacan. Wow. Hi. Julius from Cebu. Oi, Kabayan. Hi. I'm from Cebu too. If you, if you don't if you don't know, I'm from Cebu. I am based in Mandawe. Good evening from Saudi Arabia. Wow. JJ Bueno. Good evening. Januario, hi sir. Yes, hi. Hello too. Pagadian City, Verano, nice. BKK, Lupet, Abu Dhabi from Kelvin. Yeah, it's it's heartwarming knowing that our channel is reaching the Filipinos abroad. Okay, Ronan, Laguna. All right, hi Ronan. Sorry, if mahina ang audio. Um, let me let me see. If you have, um, while waiting, um, let me know if you have problems with the audio or the streaming. Shingen saying mahina audio. Can it, can can anyone clarify that if they can hear me or not? Mahina audio from Bangkok. Okay, so yeah, let me let me adjust my settings really quick. How about that? Hi, Sir Lloyd from Japan. Hi, Joe Mel. Wow. Okay lang audio for me. Oh, it's okay for MJ. Bisaya pala. Yes, Julius. I'm Bisaya. Okay, so um, audio is good. I just want to know that. Oh, Maki is saying mahina ang audio. I'm not sure why uh, it's... I'm not sure ma bakit mahina from others. Hi, from Qatar, from Arthur. Hi, Arthur. Arnado. Okay, we're 47. Once we reach 50, let once we reach 50 watching, let's start right away so that we'll save time. All right, sounds better from Iggy. All right, that's better. Good, better na po from Raquel. All right, that's good. Cholo, hey, there's one of my bosses here in Cebu. Cholo is here. Ronan V. Actually, Cholo, I'm I'm at Christians right now, so we're just three houses away. Lito, lame na volume, I'm not sure why. Better na, all right, so. Okay, that's audio, okay, very good. 49 watching, so we need one more, so we can start.
Disco ni baby. All right, we're 54. All right, Gino saying, Mayang Gabi, Sir Lloyd. Mayang Gabi po, Gino. All right, so, shall we start? All right, let's start to save time. I think this uh, the slides I prepared and the seminar I prepared is going to last an hour, an hour and 15 minutes the top. So, let's start it. Let's start. Let me prepare the slides really quick. All right, so here we go. To start off, I want to ask a question. Um, just be honest. Have you ever experienced beginner's luck in stocks? Just type yes if you have. If you haven't, it's okay. When I started in stocks, I read about MACD. I read about RSI the night before I wanted to buy the stocks. I read about swing trading. And after reading these things, I felt very confident and bought my first stock in, first thing in the morning. I said, wow. Wow, this is so easy. I got, I got this. So when in the morning, I bought my stocks. When it was high, I sold it. I won 2500 For my very first stock purchase, I won 2500 and said, wow, this is easy money. So I told my girlfriend, she, she said, wow, that's great. Thanks, God, for beginner's luck. So... When I heard the word beginner's luck, I frowned at her and said, what beginner's luck? I read about RSI. I read about technical analysis. I'm a pro. I read three. So I was very confident. And then that afternoon, I lost the 2,500 I, I won. Um, also, another 1,000. I lost 1,000 of my money plus the 2,500 I, I, I won. Now, um, now type yes if you have the sa if you had the same experience, or just to be clear, type yes if you didn't have beginner's luck and lost right away on your first day. Yeah, so it's very common. Luck is in stock exchange, really. Now, have you tried getting in one of my recommendations and then won, or maybe? Not mine, but recommendations of others, and then you also won. I have tried that, and when I won, I asked myself the most important question I ever, ma I ever made in stock exchange. How can I repeat this win? So we'll, we'll start off from that one. So hi, how can I repeat this win? I asked a student of mine, oh, before that, um, whenever I want to, I want you to know this. Whenever you win, ask yourself, "How can I repeat this win?" This way, you build a system every time you win, and then you'll look for ways how to repeat that. I asked a student of mine once this question: "Hey, how can you repeat that win?" He answered back, "Simple. I'll just go to your Facebook page and look at your recommendations, and then win again." Tumawaka, I said, <laughs> "Great answer, but seriously." Um, seriously, um, this is my question always. How can you repeat your win? Now, the answer is, let me go to my slides. Make a winning system. Um, every time you ask me, Sir Lloyd, what do you think about this stock? What do you think about that stock? I check my system to answer you, and hopefully they were right. Make a system that will guide you what to do whenever you look at a chart of a stock. Now, this system I have works for me and is winning. Um, if you look at the list recommendations I gave you earlier, many, many, of the, many of them were winning stocks. And this is what I'm going to teach you today. Are you ready? Are you ready? Great. So, first question is, what is your biggest enemy in stocks? Or what is your biggest enemy in stock exchange? You know what? Emotion. Your emotion is your biggest 
enemy in stock exchange. Greed, jealousy, impatience, fear, frustration, panic. If you if you think stock exchange is boring, boy, you're in for a surprise, cause in stock exchange there are a lot a lot of emotions that will play with your mind that will hinder you from executing your system. So first, we're going to build a system that will override that emotion. Your system should always override that emotion of yours. If a price goes down, normally you will you tend to, to panic. Now, but a good trader checks his system first before acting. Now, if the stock looks like it's going to be a good buy, don't buy it yet right away. Check your system. Um, Check your system first. Every action you do should be based on this system. Once you mastered following the system and not let your emotions get in the way, you, my friend, are a good trader. I want to emphasize that having a system and follow, following that system is vital to survive in stock exchange. Now, let's start building that system. First, we need to know who you are in stocks. In basketball, you have roles to play. If you are a point guard, um, Steph Curry is a point guard. If you are a point guard, you have to play as a point guard. You need to pass or shoot three points, and you need to be good at that for the, for the team to succeed. If you are a center, the tall ones, if you're a center, the tallest guy in the team, but you, have, but you play a different role, like you don't go below the ring or block or rebound, rebound protect the rim, what do you think will happen to your team in the game? Of course, your team will lose because you did not, uh, you did not do good in your role. Now, let me go to my slide again. Now, know who you are in the stock market. All right. So I'm going to first up. First activity we we will have is I want you to know who you are in the stock market. There are two types of people in the stock market. The investor, I mean, yeah. There are two types of people in the stock market, the investor and the trader. And I just made this up. There are two types of trader for me. One is a swing trader. One is an intraday trader. So we'll be defining these along the way. So investor, what is an investor? An investor means to buy and hold Simply that. You just simply choose a company and let time pass by and just get your money afterwards when you think it's when you think your money has grown enough. Now I highly suggest this to those who can't watch the market easily and can't watch the market anytime. This is the easiest option in stock stock market. I started like this because I started as an investor because I work in a call center. Um, you know that phones are not allowed inside the operations, so I really can't check the market. So I, I started as an investor and then tried to trade um, on my rest days. My rest days is every Tuesday and, Tuesday and Wednesday, so I get to trade on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Por portion of my money is invested in, what do you call this? It's invested in markets which are long term. So. I wanted. Uh, I started to be an investor, but I know na ingit ako sa mga traders. Na mas malaki ang kinikita kaysa sa akin. So I got greedy, and who wanted to start as an investor too? Mm hmm. All right. So yeah, many wanted to start just an investor because we really want to have some place to place our money and let it grow. But whenever you read online that people are earning this much we get greedy yes why are you here in the seminar it's because you want to trade mga greedy kayo yeah, but yeah i totally understand you i had that feeling in reality traders can earn so much more than an investor let me correct that a good trader can earn so much more than an investor why do i say that because 80 80 percent of the traders lose yeah, napakalaki ng percent ng traders ang natatalo. Um, I don't know if there are those, I don't know if there are parts of the 80% who are here, 
but I think you're here because you don't want to be part of that 80%. So that's good. Now, why is this? Bakit maraming natutalo sa trading? Because this will be the heart. This will be the heart of our discussion. This is what a trader needs to know to become a good trader. Now that bring me that brings me to the second player in stocks, the trader. A trader is someone who looks to buy a stock when it's cheap and sells it whenever he thinks the price is just right to sell. It can be in a day or up to a year. So, it's yeah, it's a simp uh, it's a more complicated form of an investor because you don't hold to your stocks for a long time. Um, once you think it's ripe, then sell it, right? So that's what a trader is. Let me just double check everything. I uh, hope we're doing good. All right, so let's continue. Now, trading or being a trader is a very sophisticated skill, but if you master it, it has the biggest potential of earning. But don't get me wrong. I don't want you. I want. I don't want to use money to lure you guys into trading. As a matter of fact, I discourage trading to most of the newbies. I really don't like newbies to be trading right away. Now, it requires a lot of study, a lot of failures, and a lot of losses before you become good at it. This is where the phrase "charge to experience" greatly fits, because it fit to me. Because lahat ng mga nawala ko. It became good experience, so ang money na nawala, charge ko na lang sa experience. Anyways, yeah, if it's a very expensive skill, for me at least, and my goal is to lessen your losses before getting good at this. I'm sharing my learning after all the losses so you won't have to go through what I've been through before becoming good at trading. Excuse me. Water break muna. All right, so there are two kinds of traders for me. Let me discuss that. One is the one is the swing trader. He is a, he's a trader who takes advantage of swings. It can range from a day to months. I'll discuss about what swings are in a while. An intraday trader is a full-time trader who looks for opportunities to earn every day. Now, let me check. Now, here we go. I want to emphasize skill. Just because you can look a market full time doesn't mean I, I encourage you to be an intraday trader. This will be part of the system I'll be teaching you now. So here's a little chart I created suggesting what, I, what is the best role for you in stock exchange. There are two factors. One factor for me is time. If you can watch the market once a week, sorry. There are two factors. One is time. If you can watch the market once a week or mostly can't watch the market, I want you to be an investor. Okay. Now, another one is if you can check the market daily, at least once a day, but not the full eight hours while it's trading, I want you to be an investor or a swing trader. Um, if you can watch the market full time, like nasa internet na buhay mo, watching the market. You can be a swing trader to an intraday trader. So, basing, judging on time, these are the fit roles for you. Now, next part. Another factor is skill, your technical analysis skill. If your technical, if you don't have uh, technical analysis, none to basic technical analysis knowledge, I want you to be an investor. Just stay as an investor for now. And then once you learn, level up, you can improve. You can go to trading. Now, if your skill is very basic technical analysis to advanced technical knowledge, you can start to be a swing trader. Right? Now, if you are already an expert in technical analysis, you can go for intraday trading. This is very complicated, but this has the most potential in earning. All right, so I want you to ask yourself, test yourself with what what role can I play in the stock market? Because if you know, if you don't know, if you don't play that proper, if you don't play your role properly, you will lose in stock market. Me, if you will ask me, I am a swing trader because I can only watch. I really can watch the market only after after work or during my breaks. 
Um, I can trade in the morning, but it's very risky for me, especially in breakouts where I cannot, I can't watch the market in the afternoon and just to know that the breakout failed. So I've uh, I've lost money that way. So I decided that I'll be a swing trader, and that's what I am currently right now. On my rest days, I do intraday, which is yeah, you can earn a lot. Today is my rest day. Um, I was waiting for Now Corporation to go up. And while waiting, um, I was waiting for the news because this is a hype stock now. There was a news after at lunch. So I shouted out to everyone, there's news to now, get in right away. And then when we get in, it was from 495 until 5.30. That So that was a quick money for me, at least. I don't know with the others who went in. So that's how intraday traders win. All right, so next slide. What are the three parts of trading? Now that you know what role or approach you will have in the stock market, let's get down to the exciting part of the system, trading time. So here's a run through of what we're going to be talking about today. First is preparation. Second is methodology. And third part of trading is the execution. Under preparation, will be we will know your type of trading. We already talked about that. Next is evaluating the big picture and fundamentally qualifying your stocks. Under methodology is buying and holding. <coughs> sorry, sorry. Buying and holding, timing the markets, trading trends. Um, we'll also discuss about consolidation and correction. Under execution is how to handle wins and stop losses, right? So let me just move this one. So first part of the trader's preparation. If you know your enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of 100 battle, battles. That's from Sun Tzu of the Art of War. And this is very true in... This is very true in stock exchange, really. As long as you know yourself, that's why I really emphasize on knowing who you are, what's your role in trading. If you know who you are and then implement the right strategy for you, you will not fear the results of 100 battles, right? So for, I consider the stock market as a battlefield. It's a battlefield of prices, a battlefield of buyers and sellers. If you know yourself and if you know the market, then you don't, you don't, you don't have to fear the results. Now, we've all, I'm going to skip the first part, which is um, knowing your role, because we already discussed about that. I'm going to go to evaluating the big picture. Let me just double check the stream. All right, there we go. Evaluating the big picture. Don't ever jump in a company blind. If you don't have any idea, sorry. If you don't have any idea what's going to happen, then you have no business there. If you don't know the company, don't buy their stocks. All right? Oh, yeah. Um, let me say this to you. If you do, we're at the preparation part. If you don't have the time to prepare, don't be a trader, really. Um, preparation is uh, like 80% of a trader's work then only 20% is execution. Yes, stocks greatly deals with luck, but as they say, luck always favors the informed mind. In stocks, when, when luck strikes you, you have to know how to handle that luck to make it play to your favor. Now, remember, in stocks, trend doesn't last. You need to know how and when to exit. We're going to discuss that later on. Now, remember, 80% of traders lose, and this is because most traders go into the market using very, having very little preparation and greatly relying on luck, right? So this is why most of the, tra of the traders fail. Now, so evaluating the bigger picture, step one, don't ever jump blind. If you don't know any, if you don't have any idea what's going to happen, then you have no business in that stock. If you don't know the company, don't buy the stock. So let me put this in a, let me put this in a simple way. Let me put this in a simple way. If a company has a good track record, what do you think will happen to their stocks, to their stock prices? Will it go up or down if the company is good? 
Yeah, simple. The company's prices will go up if it's a good company. Now, what about bad companies? Of course, there's a tendency for bad companies for their stocks to go down. It's that simple. Now, how, to know, how do you know if a company is good or bad? How? Now, I will give you this technique. Let me just make sure that everyone will see this. Let's go to the slides. There we go. So fundamentally qualify your prospects, right? So use the techniques GEMSS or GEMS. This is a technique um, get handed out from profession by, by professional traders. G stands for growing industry. Sorry. G stands for growing industry. It's the industry that where that company is growing. Like this coming years, um, Duterte promised us the grow, 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 pro, uh, build, build, build program, sorry. Build, build, build program, meaning the, um, the construction industry will be growing, growing, will be taking advantage of that projects of our president. So meaning, if you want to go, if, you, if this company you're checking is under the uh, construction industry, that means this will be a growing industry in the coming years. Second is E, earnings. So check the financials of the company. Check their earnings yearly. If it's increasing a lot, then meaning that company is doing good. If it's not, then no. Check, uh, put an X mark to that company. Now, M is management is solid. Um, usually, you can read about who's the CEO of the company, who are there, who who works with them, and then you can research about the CEO. Which companies did he come from? Did those did those companies that he worked for? Prosper when, while he was there, the meaning they're good managers. Now, next is S. The first S is superior products and services. Is their products or is their product or is their service very good? Like a telephone company. Is it superior? Yes, I think so, because it's a necessity right now for people to have good communication. So if it's into energy, gasoline, that's a very good uh, product. Um, the last S is superior finances, right? So if uh, if you want to ask, if you're going to ask me what's the difference between earnings, superior finances is, are they debt-free? Or even is their debt greater than their income or are they paying their debts? If they are paying their debts, if they manage their debts accordingly, then that company is good. So use this if all if you have check marks on all of these for that company, that means put that company on your watch list. Now, if it's not, then you don't have any business buying that company. Okay, moving forward. Right. Next is check if the company is expensive or not or not. If it is cheaper than its fair value, then put that company in your list. So if the company's price is not expensive, put that in your list. Um, fair value, I'll discuss how to get fair value in a while. If, it, if the company is expensive, then simply move on. It's already, well, it's already expensive, so don't go in that company anymore. Now, fair value. Let me talk about fair value. How do you find the fair value? Next slide. All right, so Call Financial has a fair value evaluation of companies. Um, I'm not, I'm not, what do you call this? I'm not endorsing Call or anything. I just find Call, Call's research very nice. That's why I have, um, I have a friend send me Call updates whenever a report is up, so I can check my, so I can check the companies. If you ask, whenever you ask me, if this is a good company to buy, I check this with calls. Um, their research team is very good. They give you the fair va value. Um, I'm not sure if your brokers give this to you. I just, as of the moment, I know call gives the fair value research to their online accounts, right? So check this out. Um, if you don't have a call account, if you have a friend who has a call account, ask them to send you their report so it can help you. And as part of, this, as part of my service to you, 
I'll be posting all the research I can get from my friends who are who has different uh, accounts than mine. If, um, I'll post, I'll be posting them in our group so that if you want to check the research of other of other brokers, you can freely check it. I'm gonna update this every week, every week. All right. So I hope you like that. Now know the company you're getting into. Read their reports. This part right here, um, my company, WealthSec, have reports every week. Um, that's how I knew about EEI, that it's a good, uh, it's a good long-term, uh, it's a good long-term stock to buy. It's because of the, of the reports. Now, Cole Financial does give give out this. I've read a, I've read Bidio Nomura's reports, and they also do this. So take time to read about this. If your company, if your, if your Brokers have research on the company that you want to buy. Read it to know if it's a good company or not. Is your company fundamentally good? Fundamentals will teach you to qualify a stock, right? You, I've already discussed earlier to fun fundamentally pick your stock. It has to pass all the gems, right? So is your company fundamentally good? Fundamentals will tell you to qualify a stock. Technicals will tell you how to enter it. Now, blue chips. I want to discuss to you about blue chips. Uh, take time to know your company, company, but if you have little time for this, don't worry. If you don't have any way to research about your company, don't worry. You have the blue chips. Now, what is a blue chip? Let me just make sure you are able to see this. Yeah, here. Blue chips. What are blue chips? Blue chips are those companies that stood the test of time. PSC tagged them as blue chips because those companies are already tested. So if you have, if you are having troubles looking for companies, just look at those considered blue chips, then read about them, right? Now, I want to talk about your system. If you're a newbie, I want you to put this in your system. Only trade in blue chips. I want to emphasize that only trade in blue chips only when you have earned around 50% of your money back I mean if if you put in 10,000 if you have already earned 5,000 that's 50% of your investment trading blue chips that's the only time that you go to those penny stocks or other companies that are not considered blue chips why um cuz blue chips pangalang hindi mo naman panalo Ano na, paano na kaya if you trade on other stocks, right? So, I hope you get my point. Only deal with blue chips first. Now, we're done with the first part, which is the preparation. Now, let's get into the next part. I just want, I just want to review on the first part again. So, first part is know who you are as a trader and then choose the companies, right? Choose the companies that you want to invest in. Um, Fundamentally pick them. If they're not looking good, then don't ever go into them. If you don't know who they are, don't go into them. If you don't have time, go for blue chips instead. If you're a newbie, go for blue chips, right? So next part is, I, I want to I wanna review this again. Fundamentals will tell you to qualify a stock. Technicals will tell you how to enter, right? Next slide. So methodology, we're at part two already of the trading part. Now, methodology, a good trader has a method how to replicate the process on how he earned and replicate the process how he minimized his loss. Yes, losses, because by average, a good trader loss, loses two times in three of his trades. You might ask me, what? Mas maraming beses pala natatalo ang trader. Paano ka makakagain yan? Paano ka makakita yan? So, simple. Minimizing your losses to the least risk you can. So, the smallest risk you can as much as possible. I'm going to teach you how, how to do that. We're gonna, you're going to realize how that, that is done along the way. Now, you'll see how easy this is when we go through our, our seminar. Now, first methodology is buy and hold. 
this is very easy. Just buy the stock, then hold it for a long time. The advantages of this is it's easy to implement. No need to time the market. Just get in right away. And it's very efficient because you only pay for tax once and then processing fee once. So it's very efficient. But this has disadvantages. Now, first disadvantage is you open yourself to heavy losses. What if you get in that stock at a very high price and baba basha? So that's very uh, that's a heavy loss for you. And this is subject to risk tolerance. Risk tolerance meaning if you buy something and it takes a really long time to go up, what if a better opportunity comes up? Right? Um, that's good, but that's still good. But what if your stock goes down? Right? So let, I want to show you an example of try, trying to buy and hold. I was monitoring this stock before. Let me pull up FLI. So since November, I was looking at FLI. So the best time to buy was at November at 1.75. And if I bought on 1.75, up until now, it's still at 1.84. So that's very slow. It's been like two months, and I only gained very little. Now, mind you, FLI is a good company, right? So what if another company comes in, which has a better potential. What if I put all my money there? I cannot, what do you call this? I can't go in because what if PIP shows up? Look at PIP, January. Sorry. Look at PIP, January. It was at 2.18 and now look at where PIP now is it's at 2.85 it went as high as 2.94 so naipit ang pera ko sa FLI i couldn't get into PIP because my all my money was there so what so what i'm going to suggest is what do you call this diversify make room so you can diversify set allocations so you can have room to diversify now a typical trader should only have up to 3 to five stocks maximum. This is for attention purposes. Let me go to our slide. All right, so again, a typical trader should only have three to five stocks. This is for attention purposes. Mahihirapan ka mag-monitor ng stocks mo if you have so many stocks on your port. Also, so that you can feel your wins. Now, if one of your stocks did if you only have five and you, one of your stocks did a ceiling, you can feel the gains in that. But if you have 10 to 15 stocks, kahit mag-ceiling ang isa, parang kurot lang yan. So you won't feel the gains even if one of your stocks did ceiling because napakarami ng stocks mo. All right. So for the system, for your system, divide your capital at, two, at least three parts. Right? You can divide it up to five parts. I will suggest three first if you're a newbie. You should have at least two or three. Set your buy and hold. I mean, set for buy and hold. Two of those. Right? Two out of three. So two is for buy and hold. This is for long term. And then for the other part, the third part, you can use it to trade. Kasi alam mo na, alam ko na, mangangati ang kamay nyo to trade. Mangangati kayo para makatikim mag-trade. I know that feeling, trust me. Even if you just want to be an investor, part of you really want to be a trader. So at least set one-third one of your investment, one-third of your capital into trading. The other two, put it into buy and hold. All right? Now, so what are the types of buy and hold? Cost averaging. This is... The most important one, I want you guys to learn what cost averaging is. If you're a newbie, I mentioned two parts of your investment should be in buy and hold and do this, cost averaging. This is where you buy a stock whenever you can add money to your account. All you need in this is durability of your intent 
Um, why? Because you're gonna see your stock go down sometimes. But if you just did your fundamentals, ni ka dapat matatakot. You sh you sh you really shouldn't be scared about going down because if your company is fundamentally solid, it will go up. So hindi ka dapat matakot. So here's the strategy for cost averaging. Strategy is invest a fixed amount of money every period of time. Like let's say every month you have five thousand savings, and then if you put that into your account, just buy the same stock. No need to time it. Um, no need to look at the technicals. If you have the money, just buy it right away. You'll see, sometimes you'll buy here. Sometimes you'll buy at the lower part. Sometimes at the middle. But in the long run, your purchase will be at this average, really. And then, sitting pretty ka na. Basically, on the long run, ang... Na, ang Nagastos mo is really at the low end, right? So the problem here, uh, I, I mentioned earlier the disadvantages. Sometimes you buy it here and then bababa ang price and then matatakot ka. So this methodology really just needs your determination. So um, I want you to learn this, but there's a better version of this. Um, you You incorporate trading technical analysis for... A little technical analysis with this. So let me let me what do you call this? Let me explain to you what the better what the better way for cost averaging is. Now, a better way of doing this is if you have time to check the market and the company, only buy the stock if the stock is below its fair value. Now um, to put that into perspective, what if ngayon, I have five thousand, I put it in the account, but so thinking but when I check the price, the price is above its uh, price value. So it's expensive. I don't want to buy it right now. Maybe next week. I'll check next week. If Baba Basha, then that's the time I will buy the stock. This way, you get more potential out of your money. And this, I think, is the most doable method for beginners. I strongly suggest this. By studies, this method usually gives you 14% 14, 14 gain. Of your money every year. That's already big and that's just the average. Way bigger than the bank gives you. If if it will be so much more this year, because the market is very strong. We're almost at nine thousand already. That's how strong a market this year is. So expect that fourteen percent to go higher if you just do this. Now it's not really a jackpot win, but this is the main goal of getting into stock market anyway. So don't ever forget that. Our main goal to en in entering stock market is to find a place where we can put our money and give us more um, give us more value out of it. So kung sa bank kasi, you, the bank only gives you 0.25% per year. But here, you will earn 14% 40, 40 Sorry. That's like 50% more than keeping it in the bank. Um, this place, the stock market, remember, stock market is not a place for jackpots. Jackpots. We have the casino for that. It's just a place where you can store your money and then it will give you better interest than the bank. That's the main purpose of stock market. Don't ever, don't ever forget that. This system should be in two parts of your investment. Again, divide it into three, or you can divide it into five, but two-thirds of that investment or that capital you have, you should do cost averaging. All right? Now, another way of buying and hold is the one-time big time. This is where you enter a stock and leave it there for a long time, hoping it will go up. Now, the advantage is it's good if you're right. Um, let me pull up Jollibee, really. Just for example, Jollibee, JFC. Uh, for example, you decided to invest in Jollibee five years before. Uh, I don't know if this is five years, but let's say this is the time that you bought Jollibee. And you just leave it there one time, big time nga. So hoping it will go up. You were right. Jollibee did went up right there. So that's a very big gain for you. That's like 117 to 200 82, that's more than 100% of your money. So, no technicals. Walang arte-arte. Just leave it there. But what if you're wrong? 
that's a disadvantage of this method. So I really don't recommend this for everyone. What if you're wrong? Let's look at CHP. What if you decided that CHP or what do you call this? What's the name of CHP again? What's the name of the company? Semex, yeah. Semex. Semex is a good company. It's a cement. It's a cement uh, company. And then Duterte administration has the build, build, build project. So most probably this will do good. So you get in. What if it falls down? Like what happened to Semex? Right? You can always say, well, it will go up eventually. And still, I can win. Yes, the, you, you might be right. It will go up. It might go up. It started to go up this month. But believe me, the stronger gets, I mean, the tension gets stronger and stronger as the dip goes lower and lower as your loss gets bigger and bigger. The tension gets stronger and stronger to a point that you won't be able to sleep. Titignan mo na lagi sarili mo. You'll always look at the market. Hindi ka makakatulog kasi ang laki na ng loss mo. And then, when the tension is too high, you snap and then decide to sell here. This, is, this was too deep already for you. So you decide to sell. This is where 80% of the traders sell at the bottom. Because their guts could no longer handle the stress. If you're a newbie, I tell you, this is where you will be selling. You want to test yourself? I'd rather that you don't. So I really I don't really recommend this method, one time, big time, no, no for newbies, all right? Let's go back to the slide again. Now, let's go to the second part. Timing the market, this is the exciting part. Timing is all about understanding, understanding price movements. And then this is the most crucial part of trading. When, when is the best time to get into stock and when is the best time to get out? For this, we use technical analysis. Understanding stock prices is a very important thing in trading. For your charts, I want you to use candlesticks as this has the most information in just uh, one stick. Inside the price is a battlefield of information. Let me, let me explain to you how to read candlesticks. So um, you, I hope you can see the mouse cursor. Let me check if, this, if you can see this one. All right, very good. So yes, you can see. So this is a candlestick. You can also use bar charts, but I prefer candlestick because it's more animate. It has color, so mas madali, mas madali mo malaman if, it's, if it did go up or down. Now candlesticks, imagine this is green. This is a positive candlestick. This one is the red one. Now it's green if the opening price is lower than the closing price. So if it opened here, and then close to here, meaning it's a green. Now, if baliktad, like the red one, it opened at the upper part and then closed on the lower part. If the close is below the opening, it will be marked as red. And then this wicks, they call this wick, this is how high it went before going back and then closing. This is how low it went from the opening and then going back up to close up there. And the red one, this is opening and then it did went high and then did go down up to this level and then go up to close here so that's how you read candlesticks right so master reading candlestick there should be there should be articles for studies about candlesticks there are certain candlestick patterns that will tell you if it's a good candlestick or not um, i'm not gonna dwell in that in this seminar because it's very long. There are very many candlesticks. I want you to read that um, maybe later today or tomorrow or the days to come. Now, with this, let's get into the heart of trading. Trend trading. Trend is the movement of the market. The market only has three directions, up and down and sideways. Let me show that to you. This is a typical... What do you call this? Let me just make sure this is being shown. Very good. Sorry, excuse me. Let me 
before we continue, let me just check if we're still doing good in the stream. All right, very good. So we're do we're still doing good in the stream. Let me go back to the slide. So this is a typical chart. This is FPH. Now I want you to look at the chart and try to locate yourself. Where is the uptrend? Where's the downtrend? And where's the sab sideways? All right. So again, market only has three directions: up, down, and sideways. So let me go to the next slide and show you where they are. This part right here is the uptrend. This part right here is a low, down, the downtrend. And this one right here is a sideways trend. So th that's the only movement of a trend in the market. Sorry, somebody's calling. Sorry about that. Um, I don't know who that was. It must be one of the one of the people in the seminar. Anyways, yeah. Um, let me go back to the slide. Sorry for the disturbance. No. Hmm. Now I want to make your life trading. Uh, I want to make your trading life easy. Spotting trends will make it easy for you. Let's put this into perspective. If the market is going up, do you get in? Of course, yes. That's how easy it is. If the market is going down, then go get out of it. Don't go into that. Now, if that's basically trading, not buying low and selling high like what you always hear. Trading, I want in trading, I want you to focus on trends. If the market is going up, get in. If the market's going down, then don't get in. That's how simple trading is. Now, the question is, when do you get in in that uptrend? Okay, so this is the only moment when buying low and selling high comes in. So buying low and selling high is only second in the in the uh, what do you call this in the system. First is spot the trend. If it's going up, then get in. Next is buy low and then sell high. That's only second. That's not the most important thing. Now, how do you know if the price is low or high? That's when these good guys come in. Support. And resistance. Here we go. Support and resistance is the building blocks of a trend. Support is the level where stock prices rally up. Let me just make sure that we're, we're on the. Oh, sorry. So, support level is the level where stock, stock prices rally up. Or whenever it's hit, then the market, the market thinks that price is the cheapest as of the moment. So, buying usually starts there at the support. Now, resistance is the level where stock prices start going down whenever it is hit. The market thinks that the price is too high and so selling usually starts at the resistance. Sorry. Mm. All right, so um, before I continue, I want you to always remember that. It's like this. If, if I sell and there are so many sellers out there, mag-uunahan kami sa, pag, sa pagbenta ng stock namin, right? So, bababaan ko ang presyo ng stocks ko para ma mailigpit ko or para ma-sell ko kaagad. So, I will, bababaan ko ang asking price ko. So, that's what usually happens. If there are so many sellers and little buyers, so I tend, sellers will tend to lower their stock prices para lang mabenta. Right? And also, so if marami ang bibili, ko konti lang ang supply, syempre, tataasan ko ang presyo because the demand is very high. This, I think this, because this is very in demand, um, my stock is in demand, I think the buyers will buy if, even if I put the, the prices higher. So this is, you will notice that if it's time to buy, the price will go up. And if it's time to sell, the prices will go down. That's why there is going up and going down in the stock, in the stock market. This makes, uh, you'll see that, you'll see in the market, when the buyers kick in, the prices will start go up. Just like that. So when, so when do I start selling resistance? All right. So now, support is a price point underneath a market that shows heavy buying. So here's an image. Market does this. This is a sideways market. So the support is where the prices start going up, right? By definition. So that's the support level. A resistance is the level where. Prices start to go down, and you'll see this a lot in the market. 
Trade it here. Buy near support. Now, yeah, I want to put this in your system. Always buy near support and sell close to resistance. What happens to new businesses that whenever they... Um, anyways, I'll just discuss that uh, later on. Ano nangyayari sa mga newbies? That's why they lose. But if you just follow this trade idea, if you just buy near support, your trading will be okay. Now, trend lines. Let's go to trend lines. Trend lines is formed by the support and resistance. There are three trend line movements. Sideways, slanted up, or slanted down. This is, um, this is how a trend line looks. An uptrend looks like this. A sideway trend is like this. A downtrend is like this. So sideway, I mean slanted up, sideways, and slanted down. Now, how do you spot a trend? An uptrend has higher lows. Higher lows meaning the next low price is higher than the previous low right here. Right here, when it started go up, so we have higher lows. When we started go up to go up again, we have a new higher low compared to the next higher low. Now, A downtrend has lower highs. It's the opposite of an uptrend. So here we go. There's the stock goes down and then rallies back up, but doesn't reach the previous high and then goes back down again. That means we have a lower high than the previous high. Then that marks a downtrend. That's how easy it is to spot an uptrend or a downtrend. I just want to take note of this. An uptrend, you draw a line under the prices at the support level and then on the downtrend you mark make a line at the highs okay now where are we let me pull up a stock because that was the theory before let me let me show you JFC, everyone's favorite stock, right here. Let me zoom in at this part. So I wanna, I want us to spot an uptrend right here. This is an uptrend. Let me draw a trend line. So lower, lower highs right there. It did break the, it did break that uptrend first. So it's right here, right? That's an uptrend. A downtrend. Let's look for a better downtrend. Here we go. lower highs right so you see how beautifully the stock prices go back to that trend line here it goes back to the line goes up goes back down goes back up goes back down right so i want this i want to add this to your system let me close up so para para my impact so i want to add this to your system always check for the trend line first of course with it is the support and resistance. Only buy if the trend tells you to. If it is on an uptrend, only buy if the price is near support, right? Never away from it. Uh, never away from it. This is how you buy low. What happens is that when newbies, when newbies buy, let's say at this uptrend, Right, so what happens is if whenever the stock goes up, like this one right here, if it goes up, it's very far from the uptrend, but because you are monitoring the, you're monitoring the stock and you see it's going up, there's this fear called fear of missing out. Um, you don't want to miss out of the opportunity, so you buy here, right here. So yes, you did win a bit, but look at the loss you will be incurring. If you buy up here, this is how newbies lose in trading. Fear of missing out. Never fall to the fear of missing out. System-wise, always buy near support right here. That's how easy it is, right here. And you should be gaining a lot. Now, there is gravity in stock. Let me go back to our slides. Um, I already, I already discussed about how to spot a trend. All right, so 
there is gravity in stock market, there will always be gravity. Whenever price goes up, it will always pull back. Gravity will pull it back down to the support level. You can check all charts, all stocks. It has it. Whenever you check a price, you will ask yourself if I miss this gain. Um, whenever you check a price, sorry about that. You check a price. You will always ask yourself, what if I miss this gain? Don't let your emotion answer that question. Trust the gravity. Trust the system. Be patient and wait for the best opportunity to buy. And that is near the support line. This alone, support and resistance, will make your trading life easy. If the trend is upwards, you go in. And if the trend is downwards, you don't go in. If the trend is sideways, sorry. If the trend is sideways, if you really want to get in, just get in when the price is low and sell with the price is high. Now, with the price is low, the price is low is when it's near support. If the price right as of the moment is it is at the middle, it's very risky because it can go down or it can go up. So don't buy at the middle, right? If the price is near the resistance, then don't buy. That's it. Because usually at the resistance, it will go back down to the support. So you're going to lose that much. All right? So that's how simple support and res uh, resistance makes your trading life. Now, I have a video about support and resistance. You can watch it after if you haven't yet. So you can go deeper into this. Again, this is the building blocks of a trend. And trend is very important in trading. If there is no trend, the stock will be very hard to read. You are subject to very high risk if you don't know how to check trends. Okay? Do not guess trends. You might ask, you might say this stock is already too high. It might go down soon, so you'll sell. Or the stock has gone too low. It should go up soon. You may you might be wrong. Okay? And most of the time you're wrong. Don't test yourself. Most of the time you will be wrong. I'd rather you don't test yourself. It will be best to stick to your system. If the uptrend is not yet broken, then ride it still. Always trust your system. Now, timing. Let's talk about timing. So when we're talking about timing, you don't go ahead the trend line. Stick close to it. If you get in way up there because you're fearing you're, you will miss out, you're just asking for trouble. Now, this slide so yeah, walang forever. Trends don't last forever, right? So look at this right here. Yes, it's on an uptrend, but at this point, the uptrend was broken. When an uptrend is broken, it signals a new trend, which is the opposite of this, or go sideways. Now, a trend let me, let, me, let, me, let me restate that. A trend does not last forever. When a trend line is broken, now we have a different scenario. This is the time to sell if you're in the stock, okay? Because it is a strong signal that a new trend, a downtrend, is going to be, what do you call this? It's going to be happening to the stock, right? So, again, just a little review. If the trend is going up, Get in near the trend line. If the trend is going down, you have no business in that, in that stock. I'm not here to tell you when the price is at its lowest. No. If the tr I'm here to tell you that if the trend line breaks, as what Elsa will say, let it go. All right? Why will I hold on to a stock if it's not going up anymore? Press the exit button right away when this happens, right? Um, right here. If the uptrend line is broken, sell right away so you won't suffer the loss. All right, next slide. Consolidation and correction. Rule of the thumb, it takes time to move a price to a certain distance. Any exaggeration must be paid for by correction in time or price. Now, most of the time when a stock price goes up, people get excited. Um, um, Please look at, look at the slide. Right here, this is the trend line. This is, if this is the normal uptrend of the stock, whenever it goes up, people will get excited and buy and buy and then cause an exaggeration. And the stock goes up 
abnormally. There's an exaggeration in the uh, in the movement of the price, which is going up. Once it's exaggerated, all those who want to buy the stock are already here. It's already so saturated. Yung mga dapat bibili dito, andito na lahat. So wala na bibili. So if there's no buyer, the stock gets tired. It will rest and wind up again. This, and this is what we will be talking about. An overbought market is a market that has gone up too fast, too soon. And if this happens, two things will happen. It's either, number one, right here, it will consolidate. Okay, consolidate, meaning the market will move sideways. Or it does a correction, or people call this pullback, where it's a much faster correction. Okay? It's a much it's a much faster correction because it goes back to the support line again, so it can move up again. So it's either it's consolidate back to the support line or pulls back. Right? That's the only things that will happen to a stock. So whenever it goes up, don't 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 buy up here. Right? Rule of thumb. There is always uh, gravity. Go back down. It takes time for it will take time for a price to go to this point. And then because it's exaggerated here, it will do a pullback or consolidate. So wait here to buy for it to go back to its uptrend. Right? It's called correction because it's correcting some something. It's correcting the exaggeration of the price movement. A winding period is necessary to re-stimulate a market's potential, and once it goes back to its intended pace, that is the only time it gets back up again. This is what happens to the 80% of traders who fail. It's because when they see the stock go up right here, they buy here. They do not know, they, they don't wait for the stock to go down or consolidate. All right, so let me get a real example. Let me pull up MRP. I hope you're seeing this. Ah, sorry about that. Um, let me show you what happened. So I think I missed this part. So yeah, um, this is the normal uptrend right here. This is the exaggeration. And if it's exaggerated, two things will happen. Consolidation and then a pullback or a correction because the, st the price will go back to its normal movement, and if it's already exaggerated, it will go. It will do a pullback or consolidation so that it can go back to its original movement. People, I mean, 80% of the traders, especially newbies, buy here, and then they suffer the pullback or suffer a long time for the of the consolidation. Let me go to MRP. Here we go. Here we go. So I want to show you how beautiful MRP's uptrend is. I'm oh, sorry about that. All right, so let's get MRP's movement right here. Alright, so look how beautifully MRP follows the uptrend. Um, it did go up right here, and then it consolidated back to the uptrend line right there. So if you bought here, you're going to suffer this delay in your investment. Alright, so it would have been best to wait here. And then if you waited at this area, you would have gained a lot. But if you went in here, it's good that it did not pull back and did, just did a consolidation, right? So if you waited here, if you were patient enough, you would have gained this much. And then when it reached this price and then you saw the selling on that day, you could have sold and then wait for it to go back to the trend line. And look what happens. Whenever the price goes back to its trend line, just today, it went up again, all right? So if you bought here, you would have gained again. So that's how to... That is how you maximize trading and how you maximize earning in trading.
Now, why does the market go up and down, up and down? This is why market goes up and down, up and down, really. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm kind of kind of lost in my slides. But really, really, this is why the market goes up and down, ups and up and down. It's because people exaggerated buying at this point, that's, and then it goes down or sideways to get back to its real uptrend. When it goes back too sharp, it will go back down again. So you understand now why market goes up and down, up and down. This is why. Now, let me go back to our slide. Let, uh, right, so this is NRCP. If you look at the market at first sight, if you look, NR, look at NRCP like this, if you look at the candlestick, it will be a very stressful image. Look at NRCP. Going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So it's very stressful this way. This just happened lately. Now, it, mm. now look at what happens when I put a trend line in there. It looks much peaceful now, right? Because you already know when to get in, why it go, went up and down at this point, and then back to the support line, go back up again, and once it's back in the support line, it went back up again and then go down again. This is today, right? So you know, you now know the real movement of the stock if you put a trend line on it. Look how beautiful the price go back, goes back to its trend. You can see clearly when to buy and when to sell. The power of the line, respect it. Always look for the uptrend first and then buy at the uptrend line. Now, following this technique will make your losses very minimal. I mentioned this at the very start of the sem seminar, and that's why it's important in trading. Look at this. Keeping your risk as small as possible, let me show you why this method, why this method lowers your risk. Let me get investograms and RCP. I want to use investograms because I can draw lines on investograms. So if we wrote this uptrend right here, this is the uptrend line. This one is very beautiful. So if you bought here, this is at the support line, you can see that it hit the support line, so you should have bought here. Stop losses should be just below, what do you call this? Just below the support line. So usually, I, I recommend stop loss at this level. Look at how small this line is. That's basically your risk, uh, what do you call this? That's basically your risk level for this kind of play. Look at how small that arrow is compared to getting into the, getting in the stock, let's say, at this point. Look at how big your risk potential is right there compared to respecting the line and buying it near the line right here. And right here, if you buy it here, look at your risk potential. So much short, so much shorter than buying way up here. Right? So this is how you survive in stock market, lowering your risk potential every time you buy a stock. If you buy the, if you buy the stock way up there, your risk potential is very long, like this one. Let me put uh, an exaggeration because well, I see this in the market always. Sir Lloyd, the market did, did, did do a ceiling today. I want to go in tomorrow. So yes, you go tomorrow, but look at your risk potential. It's very long. Right there. If you get in at the ceiling. What if, just be patient, because there is gravity in stocks, and then it will go back to its support level. And in this case, it did, and just buy there. And you would have earned this much today. Selling was imminent tomorrow, so sell, then you've already earned. I think this is around 4% of earning, 4% or 5% yesterday. So this is a very good, buy, I mean, good intraday income already, okay? Also, this makes your reward 
What do you call this? This makes your reward potential very high. If you use this technique about uptrends getting in at the support level, your risk level is very slow and your reward I mean your risk level is very low, but look at your reward potential. Let me compare. So let's compare the rewards you got if you just went in low. Right? So if you went in at this level, look at your reward potential and look at how short your risk potential is. That's how you survive in the stock market. This is how uptrends, support, and resistance will make your trading life easy. All right, so let's go back to the slide. Um, I'm not sure. Sorry about that. Let me check the chat. Were you able to see that, guys? Um, can you please reply at the chat if you saw that last part about the risk potential? Let me check the chat. All right, so let's go to the slide. <laughs> Sorry, let, let, me, let me go back to that again. So yeah, um, you go to, I'll just I'll just uh, go with the slides all the time so that you won't miss the slides. Okay, so just a quick recap. Look at the risk potential if you go inside the stock at the support level. How short this arrow is. Your risk potential is very low compared to the reward potential you will get if you entered the stock at this level. So this is where low risk, high, high reward comes in. If you just follow trend lines and support and resistance, you can, you can apply low risk, high rewards to your play. So you've already leveled up. Now you might say, ah, uh, so yeah. With this in mind, you have already leveled up in stock market and in being a good trader. How do I know for sure? Let me prove to you that you've leveled up. Let's do a test. This is going to be a bit delayed, but I already know what you will be answering. So let me go to the test part of my slides. All right. So this is FLI. I just want to make sure everyone is seeing this. So this is, so sorry, it's not FLA, it's ALI. I draw the trend here, right here, because um, later on there will be a trend. I'll show you. But you see that the stock did a very good rally. Now, usually I get these questions really from newbies. Do I get in at this level? Sir, look at ALI. It did win today. Can, should, I go it, sh should I go in the next day? What's your answer? Do you go in here or not? I'll give you five seconds. Of course not. Very good. Now, if you did not go in, it would have been good because the stock consolidated near the support again. Now, we are near the support. Do we go in or not? I'll give you five seconds again. All right. So, best answer here is go in because it's already near the support line. If, and if you went in, you would have gained this much if you went in because it's already near. There's signs of buying. There you go. You would have gotten into that win. Now, again, I get questions like this. Sir Lloyd, it's, all, it's winning again. Should I go in? What do you think about ALI? I will ask you, do you go in at this point? No, because if you got into that point, you would have suffered losses after losses right there. Now, it did go to this level. I'll ask you, do you buy or not? It's somehow near the, it's somehow near the support. So if you went in, you could have gained this much. 
don't worry about that because after the signs of buying right here, I would recommend that you get in because it's already going up. So it's, there's no point in there's no point in waiting it at, at the support line, right? Because it's all, for me this is already near. Um, if you're aggressive, you would have gone in. Uh, it would have been safe if you did not go in, but you would have missed this gain right here. But anyways, don't worry. It, there's the law of gravity. Now, next question. The price is, is here. It's been winning for how many how many how many days now? So one did go down, win again, go down, win up again. So do you buy here? Five seconds. No, because if you bought it there, you would suffered this loss right here. It did gravity again, and then gravity pulled it back to support right there. Now it's now at support, near support. Do you go in or not? Yes. Get in. I would suggest buying it again. It did not break the uptrend line, so buy it again. And if you bought it, you would have gained again at this level. I want to show you also, we have a resistance right here. If you want to maximize your money at the resistance, sell. So at this point, there was selling, sell, and then just buy up here. At this point, this is the resistance right here. Sell and then wait for it to go back to the support level and at the support level buy again and then you have you would have earned this much again. Now at this point it's a green one, it did win a lot. Well there's a sign of buying. What do you do? If you're already in, you sell. But if you're not already in the stock, do you buy or not? Five seconds. No, don't buy it because it's way it's way away from the uptrend line or the support line if you did not go in that's good because if you went in you would have suffered this loss right so it's now near it's now near support level again do you go in or not of course go in and if you went in you'd have experienced this win but this time it's not very it's not a very high win it went to this level but it's at support do you go in or not I would say go in because it's at support level. You don't know really what will happen tomorrow if it goes up or not. So if, if this was me, I would have gone in. And then remember, if you go in, there's a stop loss below support. So if tomorrow, if, break, if it breaks out support, if it breaks support, then sell. But this case, it did not break support. So I won if I went in, right? So support line, always get in support line. Now it's way up here, Sir Lloyd. It's going up. Do I buy or do I do or do I just wait? Of course. What do you What do you do if the stock is up here? You wait, right? There's the support line right there. And if you wait, if you went in up here, you would have suffered this loss. It's that simple, really. Stock market is this simple. Now we're at support. Do you buy or not? Yes, buy, because we're at support. But watch it carefully, okay? Oh, when you buy, you should have an exit plan below the support level and in this case it did break out it did break that support level this time so I would have sold I would have sold my stock at this point and if you sold your stock at this point it would have been the best move because it consolidated for a long time right so see you guys leveled up Whew. That was tiring. Anyways, yeah, see, I know you will level up after this seminar. Now, you might ask, you might say, wow, I saw Lloyd's seminar and he just made everything look so easy. It's so easy when you throw in paper, play money like this, if we just play with money right here. This is what we're doing. It's very easy like this. But when, you, when it's your real money, oh, I tell you, try it out. When the real emotion kicks in, it will make, you, it will make the ball game a totally different field. This is why we need a structure, and I want to instill this structure to you. Because when emotions kick in and you don't follow this structure, trust me, everything will be ruined. I lost 20% of my investment when I started because I did not have the structure to protect me from my emotions when I started. Now, there are more, there are more strategies in buying, like breakouts and patterns. I have already uploaded some videos about them. 
like trading breakouts. I won't be able to tackle those tonight as this will take most of our time. So just watch, watch those videos. Now, at the last, now last part of our seminar is, I mean, last part of trading is execution. I just want to tell you, trade. Try trading so you'll get used to it. You'll get to, used to the emotion. Trade to get, when you trade, get ready to lose some. Don't be afraid. As long as you maintain these losses to a manageable level, these losses will get will will be very valuable because this will be lessons for you. This will teach you the value of stop losses, the value of buying at the support level. All right. Um, learn from these losses. If you lose again, but a bigger lose, shame on you. Magkasino ka na lang. A trader does not miss out on an opportunity whenever you see an opportunity to buy. If it's an uptrend, if it's at the support level, if you have money, buy it. A trader will always be where the opportunity is. A vital part of our execution is stop loss. What is stop loss? Now, PSE does not allow automatic stop loss um, unlike other markets. But anyways, let's see what stop loss is. Stop loss is an order um, placed with a broker to sell a security when it reaches a certain price. Stop loss orders are designed to limit an investor's loss on a position in a security. <coughs> Again, PSC does not have does not allow allow your brokers to have stop losses. I really don't know why, but it has its advantages. Um, stop losses tend to make the um, tend to make the market panic because when it goes down, lahat na nag stop loss automatically sells and then the stock really goes down really low, which is not healthy, right? So it's not really the right um, trend of the stock anymore if there is stop loss. So that's the disadvantage of an automatic stop loss. Now, what works for me is using investograms wa watcher option. Do you have investograms? Um, there's a watcher option there. Um, I'm not. I'm not advertising them, but their watcher option is very helpful for me. Um, it will set an alarm. It, it will send me an alarm once my stop loss is hit. So even if I don't watch the market, I'll still be notified that it's time to sell. Right? Strict system. I want to instill this on your system. Never get in a stock if you have not set a stop loss. All right? Always set a stop loss. Some would say, ah, I'll... Let it stay for now because I think the prices will come back. What if you're wrong? What if the price don't come back? It, it goes down and it will snowball bigger and bigger. Your loss will snowball bigger and bigger. Right? So this is why you have to set a stop loss all the time. Remember the failing 80%? That's because they did not set a stop loss. Why not just sell it? Why not just sell it for now and then just buy it again when it, when it comes back again, when, it, when an uptrend stop, uh, starts up again? This way you limit your loss instead of hoping that you don't lose. Where do I do, where do I set my stop losses? Stop loss always just below the support level. Um, if you're, let me just double check if the slide is up. Here we go. So. Stop loss just below the support level. If this is the support level, stop loss right here, the green arrow, um, it goes up. The resistance, this, it, it did a breakout. The resistance becomes a support and stop loss below that support right there. So when it breaks the support, my stocks will be sold. Anyways, I bought here, so my loss is very small compared the, to the potential earning that I will be earning, right? That's how easy it is. Do not use percentage of your investment. Because if you use percentage and then you went up, you went in here and then you use percentage like 3%, 3% is right here. And then stop loss, you already sold. You would have been out of the trade and went up and win this much, right? So don't use percentage. Use the support as your basis for stop loss as long as you buy near the support. All right, so um, a good, what do you call this? Uh, a best practice for me as a trader, I watch the news as much as I can. News has a huge effect on stocks. 
um, especially in the Philippines. Um, just like today, now has been struggling until midday today when Bloomberg TV made a live news. When Bloomberg TV made a live news today that the top three companies that is qualified to bid for the tel third telco is now one, and one of them is now, I immediately bought now um, as a service to our club. I did announce that uh, Bloomberg did have a news about now, and I know this will kick the this will kick the stock, and it did. It went up from four point ninety five to 5.30 instantly. So you have to stay ahead by being up to date with the news. Now, trading is a discipline. It is not how much you earn that makes you a good trader. It's how good your system is and how you execute that system. A good trader follows a good system. And the best trader is one who only does an action if the system says so. Sounds simple, right? <laughs> simple pakinggan, but tatawanan ko kayo bukas. It's not easy. The first part of the system, palang, mahirapan na kayo. This is the system I want to instill to you. I guarantee it, mahirapan kayo. First part of the system is to leave your real money. Okay? Wag nyo gagamitin ng real money nyo. First, for the system, use Investagram's virtual trader. Right? Trade using the trade trainer or which gives you virtual currency. That means you won't, you will not earn for a month in trading using your real money. Do you hear that? That voice at the back of your, your head saying, what? If I will not earn in stocks for a month, no way, I will not follow this guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That right there is your greed talking to you already. If you let that win, I tell you, yes, you could still be a good trader someday. But be ready to lose a lot. If you follow me or not, it's up to you. But this is the first part of, and the most important part of the system, the execution. Practice. Who among you, who among you have invest, Investagram accounts? S type in yes. Very good. Good. Um, if you don't have one yet, create one after this seminar. Write this down, investagrams.com. There is a feature in the app called virtual trading, you get 100,000 virtual money and can trade on the real stock market. Trade there for a month and check how much money you will earn after a month. If you earn 20K, that means you have a system that can make you, that, that, can, that can make your money grow 20% every month. And if that's enough gain for you, for your money, 20% a month, that's so big. Right, right, yeah. If that's enough for you, for you, if that gain is enough, then use this system to, with your real money now, right? Practice with Investagram's virtual trader first. Then if you, find, if you find this system very good, then apply it with your real money. I guarantee you, you'll earn more or less that much with your real money. Now for your real money, don't worry, you can still earn. Just be an investor for a month and put your money in a company that's trending up. That's it, and then trade with Investagram, practice. If you watch the market, and my first recommendation today, number one on the list, you'll see that I, the number one uh, on the list is one of the big winners today. By noon, it was at 20% already, IMP. I used the Bollinger Band technique on that, how I, rec how I got that stock and recommended it. I will be making a video about it next week, so be sure to watch it. This wraps up our seminar today. I hope you learned something. I will ask for a little favor from you guys. If you can send me a video feedback about the seminar, that will be a great help to me. Tell me what you like the most, and importantly, what you want me to improve on so I can improve on them for the next seminars to come. Thank you for attending. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to this, to this channel yet. Thank you. Happy, tra happy trading. Seize the day. Thank you so much.